Here's an, our example case study. So again, this is based around uh, an educational uh, profile. This is a middle school. This is actually one of our customers who contacted us, said they were having some, some issues and could we come out and uh, make some recommendations. So we did, and we did it for this particular instance, and we're gonna use uh, Wi-Fi Explorer to, to do all of this. Uh, this is actually a three-story building, and you can see here in this building, we've got seven access points. The access points are the little black and white dots that you see hovering in space. And um, we're only gonna concentrate on this first floor during this presentation. Okay, so we sent out a Whitsfield engineer with Wi-Fi Explorer, and we took some static captures. Now doing that, we are able to follow through with our case, to, or through our scorecard here, and um, some of the things that we couldn't tell with Wi-Fi Explorer, things like transmit power coverage, capacity, roaming, QoS, which stands for quality of service, RTLS, which stands for real-time locationing services, those were outside of the scope of this original project. But one thing we were able to tell the channels was uh, an important, um, channels were important. Usually to tell these other things in the RF environment like transmit power coverage and capacity, we would use a site survey type application to do that. And here's an example of that. So in this case, We've used a site survey application. Let me make clear, this is not Wi-Fi Explorer that we used to do this. We used a different program. And by uh, doing an analysis, a walk around uh, measurement of the energy out at that building for the 2.4 gigahertz, you can see by the color coding that the intensities of the color has meaning. And you can look up here at the legend to tell what that means. You can see that the magenta color is up near the top and it has a, uh, a number after it, negative 40. That stands for negative 40 dBm decibels compared to uh, milliwatts. And we can see that the majority of this first floor is that magenta color. As we go down in scale, we see that really the weakest area would probably be this yellowish area over in the, the corners. And by looking down the scale, that is somewhere probably between 55 and 60 dBm, which is a very strong signal. So a NEG 65, NEG 67 signal is kind of what most organizations use as the lowest tolerable threshold for their signal. So we can tell by looking at here that everything except a couple of corners, the extreme areas, have very, very strong coverage, okay? 2.4 gigahertz. How many of you are familiar that uh, most access points, most Wi-Fi today has two separate bands of coverage, that is the 2.4 gigahertz and the five gigahertz band? Everybody familiar with that? Okay. So 2.4 was the original one back from the uh, latter 90s, and then uh, the five gigahertz band was given to us in the early 2000s. Here's what the, two th the five gigahertz band looks like. Same place, same access points, same radios. Most access points, dual band access points would have two separate radios, one for 2.4 gigahertz, one for five gigahertz. Power settings would probably be, if left at defaults, would be all the same. In this case, everything was set to default. And we can see that the access points We've done one pass through here. We've done one set of measurements. We've looked at what the 2.4 gigahertz energy levels are. And now we're looking at what the five gigahertz energy levels are with the same output powers and antennas from each access point. Can you see there's a difference in the color coding? And the reason why is because one of the physical properties of RF is that the higher the frequency, the more quickly it attenuates going outwards from the access points from its source. And so a five gigahertz signal, which is higher frequency than 2.4 gigahertz, attenuates more quickly. And we see that here. We can tell by looking at the legend here that maybe half or more is down into the NEG 65 range. Thing is, that's still good. It doesn't look good when you look here and say, well, that's better. And that's not as good. Well, actually it is, it's just fine. NEG 65, depending on your design requirements, is probably sufficient. 
But mostly what I want you to take from this is this. If your client device is dual band capable, and if you have created an SSID that is configured for both the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz, which is the default when you set up your SSIDs, unless you go in and make some manual adjustments, most SSIDs are created and they will be uh, um, assigned to both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. Now, your client device has to make a determination. Which one should I use? So here's the way it works. A client device comes into an area, you power it up, it comes up, it looks to see, okay, I'm a dual band device, that means that I need to look for a certain SSID. Let's say that the certain SSID in this case was teacher. And the teacher SSID has con been configured for both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. So now when your client device comes up and comes alive, it's going to go to the first band, 2.4 gigahertz, and go to each channel in 2.4 gigahertz looking for a beacon being sent out from an access point on that channel. So it'll go to channel one and it'll listen for a period of time to determine whether or not there's a beacon being advertised from an access point that is advertising services for the teacher SSID. If it finds one, it doesn't just try to connect, it just starts a log. It says on channel one, I saw advertisements for teacher SSID beacons and the signal level from that access point was neg 67 dBm. Then it goes channel two, and channel three, and channel four. Continues on through the entire 2.4 gigahertz band, and then since it's dual band capable, it jumps over to five gigahertz. Now it starts out with channel 36, goes to 40, 44, 48. It goes completely through all of the channels that it's capable of, keeping that log book, that running log tally going, and once it's gone to the end of the five gigahertz channels, now it's time to make a decision, it goes back to the log file, looks down the line, sees which signal was strongest, pure and simple, which one was strongest? Oh, here's one at neg 65. Yeah, that happened to be on channel six, and it tunes to channel six. So that's the procedure. Can you see that if, whoops, if you configure same SSID on both bands, the 2.4 gigahertz is always going to be more attractive than the 5 gigahertz. Now, why is that important? Because 2.4 gigahertz is very, very limited. There's not much bandwidth to go with it in the first place. And so we want you to get your, uh, your, critical, your business critical applications moved over to 5 gigahertz. There's enough channels there, enough resources so that we can actually provide pretty good services if, if some other things are taken care of. But if you stay in 2.4 gigahertz, you're almost always gonna have a bad experience. So that's kind of where we're leading with this, okay?